Yes. Or the spelling challenged. Could you also the spell Marais, your name Marais, 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 That might be Marais. easily mistooken. Token. Or like your P with your E or your C. <laughs> Could you okay. maybe like L for Laura in case somebody is spelling challenged. Not that anyone working on this saying, is no, that way, but just in case. You call you for this is Maratus? Maratus. 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 It's Portuguese influence, so the Spanish to it, in Indonesia. The way the Germans had me enunciate it was Maratus. And I think we found some online things that said it. Collaboration. It looks more like Moratus. I was going to say Moratus. But yeah, the way they Maratus. Maratus. That's, I was, yeah. that's what I initially said at the Meritus Rainforest. That's what I yeah. said. Yeah. Well, we'll create our own. That's you right. You can yeah. call it whatever you want. Whatever you want to call it. Because yeah. it doesn't matter what name you call it, it's still the Rainforest. Yes, yeah. it is. So, okay, there's lots of Rainforest. Where does this one go? What, what's like the span of it? Um, it it's scattered across 10,000 islands in Indonesia. Indonesia. And it is on the, this particular one is on one of the bigger islands, mm -hmm. and it's on a mountain, mm -hmm. and they're wiping out the entire mountain with millions of trees a day. Yeah. Misinformation that's out. I don't know what you found on the internet. These are the facts. Yeah. Tens of millions of trees are being pulled out of rainforest daily. Yeah. yeah. For teak, for palm oil, mm -hmm. for other man-made needs. Less than 1% of the rainforest has been discovered. We don't even know the life forms there, and we're destroying them at thousands and hundreds a day, depending on how we go through. And less than 1% being discovered, we've already found from a violet alone last year that nearly got trampled in a rainforest, the cure to leukemia. Mm. So 99% of the other things we haven't discovered may be cures to the other 99% of the problems on the planet if we just slow down enough to find them. Yeah. And also, we need to breathe that we're killing our planet. It's that next right. rocket scientist. Oxygen, 40% of the planet's oxygen from rainforest. 30% yeah. of fresh water, 30% of medicine and food supplies, rainforest. So if we wipe out our oxygen, 40% yeah. of it, only 40% of it, and we only wipe out 30% of our clean water, we can rest assured that the EPA will finish that for us when the U.S. government passes complete their regulation this fall. That's really smart and timely. But aside from all of that, you have the scenario of, of um, the lost water, the lost air, and two degrees now. Mm -hmm. We are two degrees Celsius centigrade, rather, two degrees centigrade from core meltdown. We are literally five years, ten tops, away from everything underneath 250 feet of sea level now being completely below water. That would include Los Angeles mm -hmm. and many cities in North America, mm -hmm. Miami, Seattle, you know, Louisiana. I want to show this states. app on here. I don't know. Can you, um, that, that guy's out the JPL, but yeah. Please, let me yeah. stay focused Got one it. at a time. So, so what can I say for you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to fire you off questions okay. after you slate. Or maybe you do a slate first, then after you do a slate, they come back to your name and a pitch for the film that I can put on like a promo. Like we did okay. where we have Alto and we have uh, Ed. Okay. Make your story somewhere, a short thing that you would like on the website for people to see, somewhere between that six second link and the 10 hour one that Alto has, because we're going to chop his down, um, that can go on the website. We may also use part of this in the film or not, but do the Slate the problem first, then we'll go through the questions. Do you want to like approve the frames? I already looked at them, so if you haven't moved it since I looked at it, it was fine. Just to zoom in and focus and zoom out. Okay. Ready when you are. Okay. Hi, I'm Laurel Harris. That's L A U R E L. Harris is H A R R I S. You find your name funny. Anything. That was. <laughs> well, I was thinking that. Never mind. Okay, so. You said, yeah. So. You can give your name again, like uh, the A for the Marines has been part of the uh -huh. What? Then you that? <laughs> no. Your name. Title of the film. Won't you help us? It's about uh, uh, and then go ahead. Okay, what's the title of the film again? Exactly. Maratus Rainforest. Maratus Rainforest. Should not die. Should not die. Laurel Harris, Maratus Rainforest, Should Not Die. 
And you want a little bit about me? Oh, no, no, no. I wanted you to be like you're doing a promo like I did. Hey, this is a big legit. Wait, I haven't seen his, so just tell me real quick. So you want okay. me to do name. your name? Yeah. Film title, film title. And some reason what the film is about and why people should watch it and help us do the film. Okay. Your pitch. Laurel Harris, Maratus Rainforest Should Not Die. Without these rainforests, we have no idea how quickly our life could be completely altered here as we know it now. Without the existence of the rainforests, we are losing precious air, precious wood, and precious species that are dying off at, an, at a rate that's nearly as fast as the dinosaurs did 65 million years ago. Our Earth is in trouble, and we need your help. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Um, so, the UN was supporting this film. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. You know now the UN is not supporting the film. Mm -hmm. And you know the reason why. The reason why is not because I called them at 6.30 on a Saturday morning as they're alleging. Because the phone records, Your Honor, will reflect that I called them at 8.37 in the morning. It had nothing to do with the phone call. It had to do with the fact that I said I was going to use the footage that they didn't want to use. Which was me interviewing an ambassador. Well, I'm a camera person with a list of questions. And he gave testimony on they telling us that please no more noise on the set guys I'm serious I've asked about this before this is the last time I'm gonna ask so they knew 50 years ago they should have stopped this they didn't they figured we would have the technology to change it by the time we got here not their problem they needed the money then how does that make you feel This could have been aborted 50 years ago. I don't know if I want to speak to the UN, honestly. I speak to the UN? Speak about the UN? No, you're, you're not. I'm just saying, how does the emotion that I make you feel about, if we knew about this, why didn't we stop it? I'm just planning the thought of the question, if, how does that make you feel that we knew about this and we, 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 it's no longer, we don't have any more wait time. We can't keep speculating, is this happening? It is. We have to stop. No, we don't have any more wait time as we know it. Am I speaking to camera or am I speaking to you? Always oh, speaking. Okay. And you're just keeping the roll? Um, we don't have any more wait time as we know it. I think what it's going to come down to right now is individuals getting involved, individual corporations, and people that have a heart and a passion for this project, for life to change for the better. And that comes down to each and every one of us, as we've said before. But it's more dire than we realize. Isn't this just American propaganda because you guys already have all the teak wood and the ivories and all the nice stuff and now the rest of us want it, you just want to ban us? It's not real, this whole rainforest. No, it's, it's very real. This whole issue is very, very real. The reason it's real is because it's like ripples in the ocean or ripples in, in a pool. It's been affecting all of us on a grand scale for so long that we don't even have a full comprehension of what's going to happen if this rainforest if these rainforests continue to disappear at the rate they're going. It's mind-boggling. Are you a tree hugger? I'm a total tree hugger. I'm proud to admit it. Are you a forest hugger? I'm a forest hugger. What do you say about the people who can't see the forest through the trees? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Why are trees important to you today? I like to breathe. There's this little thing called breath that I like to do, and I think probably you do too. And without trees, it would be a little tough. Do you have any um, respiratory infections, sinus problems? You're blessed. You're not someone who has bad breathing problems. No, Picture don't. the world with 40% oxygen and population still growing. How does it feel to have 40% less oxygen and asthma? So you've seen those scientific photos maybe of the future, those rendered photographs of what it might be like in the future. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live like places now where people have to feel like they I don't want to live like people now where they feel like they have to go outside with a mask on their face 24-7. Where is the humanity in all of this? Where's the tenderness and compassion for these creatures that are dying at a rapid rate every day? And that includes us. I'm one person, what can I do? Okay, so this is going to sound really out there to some people. I don't have a problem saying I'm a little bit of an extremist when it comes to conservation. But simple things like 
not using as much paper. Do you know how much of the forest is destroyed from paper products being made? How about using less water, not running the tap water every time you wash the dishes for an unlimited amount of time or when you brush your teeth at night? How about using your car less? If you're somebody that drives, how about figuring out your schedule so that you're creating less time going from place to place and putting it all in one bunch of time? How about reaching out to somebody and saying, go meatless for a night? Because by using less meat in our diets, we're telling the cattle industry, hey, we're not happy with how much of the cattle industry is destroying rainforest. What about those people who have got to have their palm oil, their chai, their mocha latte, their tea quid? Why can't I have it? Okay, there's ways that we can do this. We can be sustainable workers. We can work with forest, uh, let me say that again, sustainable forestry. That's one huge answer to this problem. It's going in and creating laws for this kind of deforestation or for this kind of cutting so that we're doing select cutting and not clear cutting. Huge difference. We would save millions of acres of forestry just by doing sustainable forestry practices. Did you realize that what you just said is a complete oxymoron to what's about to happen this fall in the United States? Until I told NBC Today Show this two weeks ago, they didn't know it either, but it's actually been a pending law on the books now for almost a year. And, and they um, are now voting into law the possibility that they can no longer use any scientific data to find any companies through the EPA for air, water, soil contamination, because it's not fair because the executives sitting on the board of advisors for the EPA were appointed by Senate and Congress, all out, and to work at Exxon, BP, no conflict going on there, I don't think. How does it make you feel that you're saying do this, that they're about to deregulate all of North America for fracking and unlimited digging into our forests? It's about to become law. Thank you, Uncle Sam. <laughs> You know, years ago, slavery used to be okay in this country, too. And people said, what can I do? And one by one, they started standing up and saying, we're not going to stand for this. Every person counts. Well, what about every tree counting? What about every species counting? What if we all stood together and said, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to take this anymore. And it starts with education. Education, education, education. We have to share the word of what's going on right now. And it has to happen in industrial, wealthy countries, and it has to happen in poor countries where they don't necessarily know what they're doing and the ramifications that it has. Not an easy answer, but it's where to start. Why do I have to live in a forest when you get to live in a big city? I could carve down my forest, I could build a city right here and not have to move. I can't answer that. Okay. So, somebody who doesn't have a lot has almost nothing. A homeless person. How can the meekest the people who come from very humble beginnings who usually give the most, how can they help? And how can that 1% get off their chair and help? One of the ways I think would be helpful is to support really great organizations that are doing conscious work. I would say the World Wildlife Fund Foundation, the World, the WWF, and that didn't come out very well. Uh, support organizations that are doing really great conscious work the WWF, World Wildlife Fund. Uh, get out and see if there's something you can do every day that might be a little less comfortable, but that would help in the long run. So in other words, using less water, using less gas, looking to see if something you're buying is local instead of being made overseas in a way that may not be conscious. Worst case scenario, maybe they are right about this global warming thing. And the sea level does raise by 250 feet and it wipes out every island nation. Bye bye, away. bye bye, Los Angeles. At what is the tipping point where people should maybe think that they should do something? Where's the tipping point? Have we reached it? Have we passed it? Where's the tipping point? We're pretty funny as humans, you know? A lot of times we don't like to do anything until it gets really uncomfortable. And until it gets to that point, we're probably not going to do much as a mass movement. What can I say? Unless you're uncomfortable, you may just sit back on your hunches and say, everything's fine, it's gonna be okay. We had the hottest 
summer on record worldwide this last year. You think that's going to get any better, folks? Not really. So, it's getting hotter. The world is ending. Let's just have a big party. <laughs> Party like it's 1999. Let's just party the way out. Burn it down. Burn it down the house. Okay, that's not a world that I want to be a part of. Which world? A world that has its head in the sand doesn't appeal to me. It just doesn't appeal to me. So what's the world you envision for you, your friends, your family, and the world at large? Differences, similarities, or otherwise? It sounds so elitist, but wouldn't it be nice if we could all just be a little more aware? If we could all just ask ourselves every day, what can I do? What can I do today in one small step that might have ripples that would affect everybody else on this planet in a positive way? Not yeah, but what if my religion tells me not to get along with you, or my government tells me not to get along with you, and I need the trees from my government, my religion? Then I'm appealing to those people that don't have issues with their religion and their government to do something about it. And if you do have issues with your religion and government, should you, you question still, it? You can always still ask yourself, what can I do to help make this world a better place? What can I do to help make my family's life a little better? If you can only think within your family parameters or your life as you know it, great. Do something to help that make a big difference in the world. I got the kids, I got school, I got, oh, I got no time, I got no time to help with this. You guys fix it. I think the only way this problem is going to find a solution is if we all come together and take one step at a time. And there's always time for one step. I didn't create the mess. I'm just a spectator here. Can't you save me? Can't you guys save me? You're killing me, Kurt. I know. <laughs> There's so many cues. I want to see the responses. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have some great <laughs> outtakes for sure. Oh, is there anything we haven't touched on that you did research on or personal stories of how it's affected you from any treatments or procedures, family members, how it may have saved someone's life from treatments from the rainforest or things found like that violet that was found a year ago in the rainforest that's now a cure for my fucking ribs for, uh, for leukemia. Um, things like that. Do you have any personal stories like that you can share? Or feel comfortable sharing about? I don't have any stories about how my life was saved by the rainforest in a physical, tangible way, but I will say that I had the great pleasure of going to two different rainforests in the world, two separate times, and on both occasions, I was not prepared for the mind-altering effect that the forest had for me. In other words, it's teeming with life, and it helped me come alive. It was so magical. Whether it was night or day, 24-7, there's always things moving and breathing and showing up to show off how fabulous they are. It is a magical environment, and there's nothing like it anywhere else on this planet. To see it destroyed at the rate that it's going, it's heartbreaking. And if you haven't been there, take it from one of us. Life as we know it will not be the same without these amazing places teeming with life. You just made my day. Thank you. You're welcome. That was very beautiful. Anything else you want to share? It's heartfelt. That's what I'm looking for. You That's really what this good. movie is about. Oh, thanks. That's what this movie is about. Real people I saying real things. You. Is there saying anything else you want to share? Parting mm -hmm. thought. Inspiration to others. I hope Tie your shoes. Buckle up and go. <laughs> we'll see you soon. I'll be the letter. Yeah. I'll see you soon. I hope. I'm right? sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I feel well, like I, I have to start saying we should talk to DMs. <laughs>